Well, hello. Today we are going to talk about Lesson 16. And of course, this is Saxon Course 2. We're going to start out by identifying what Lesson 16 is really about. Lesson 16 is a lot about the U.S. customary system of measures. And that's the system that we basically use in the United States. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, they tried to switch us over to metric. Uh, it didn't work. We still, most of us, the majority, I guess, use the U.S. customary system. Uh, but you will find uh, that the hospitals and the doctors and the medical communities have all adapted to metric. And most everything that is canned or bottled or uh, boxed in your grocery, grocery stores will have both measurements, both customary and it will have metric. The second thing in this unit that we're going to talk about is function tables. And they're actually related, but uh, a function table has a lot of uses and we'll find out one of its uses today. Anyway, talking about the vocabulary, the U.S. customary system is when we use feet, ounces, pounds, and degrees Fahrenheit to measure weight, volume, or temperature in the United States. And like I said, it is a U.S. system. It's one that we've been pretty much accustomed to using over the last, mm, probably, oh, I don't know, since like forever. Now, the units of weight in the U.S. customary system for weighing is pounds and ounces. So you have 16 ounces is equal to one pound. 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton. Notice the abbreviations over here on the right hand side. Okay, those will be important. You need to use the abbreviations as much as possible. Get used to using those. Now, we have another important vocabulary word here called conversions. Now, conversions is identified as changing a weight or measurement from one unit of measure to another. Like, for instance, if a truck can carry two and a half tons, how many pounds is that? So you sit down and you think, okay, I know from up here, from above, that one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. Okay, so you can set it up in an equation like this, and so you have two and a half tons times 2,000 pounds. How many pounds is that? Change this into an improper fraction, multiply them across, cross reduce, and you end up with 10,000 over 2, which if you divide, you end up with 5,000. So two and a half tons is 5,000 pounds. We could have done that in our head because we know that one ton is 2,000. 2 tons would be 4,000 and another half would be 5,000. But if it had been a harder number, this would have been the perfect way to set it up. Now, when it comes to conversions in length, there are some things that we do have to know. And I definitely want these in your notes because you're going to be asking me, well, how many inches in a foot or how many feet in a yard? And this is stuff you need to have in your notes. So. Uh, length conversions, U.S. customary measure, 12 inches, there's your abbreviation, equals 1 foot, there's your abbreviation, 3 feet equals 1 yard, 1,760 yards, there's your yard abbreviation, equals 1 mile. How did we get that? Well, it's explained in the next step. 5,280 feet, there's your feet abbreviation, equals 1 mile. If you take 5,280 feet and divide it by 3, because there's 3 feet in a yard, okay, you end up with 1,760 yards. So that, that's how that's accomplished. Um, there's another way to do conversions, which I think personally is really easy. It takes a little while to get onto, but let's just take a look at it a little bit. If you have 2 yards, you want to know how many inches. This is a cool little conversion thing. Okay, you know you have two yards. And you know that there's three feet in one yard. And you know there's 12 inches in one foot. How can we figure out how many inches? Well, you have yards in the top and yards in the bottom, so we can actually cross those out. You have feet in the top and feet in the bottom. You can cross those out. All you have left is inches, which is exactly what we were looking for. 
When you set this up, you have to remember to, to vary. If you have yards here, then your next step should have yards in the bottom so that you'll be able to cross them out. If you have feet on the top here, you need to have feet on the bottom here. And the ideal is to have the one that you are looking for be the only odd man out. It's the one that you can't reduce, can't cross out. So you have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 6 times 12, go over here and do the math, is 72. And of course the answer is 72 inches. Now that's kind of a cool way to do it. I like that. Uh, I call it my railroad track method. And I use it for just about any kind of conversion that I need to make. It works pretty good. So we'll have more opportunities to try that. Okay, liquid measure. In the United States, liquid measure looks like this. We have 8 ounces equals 1 cup. 2 cups, here's your abbreviation, equals 1 pint, here's your abbreviation. 2 pints equals 1 quart, and 4 quarts equals 1 gallon. This is important stuff. You've got to have these in your notes. That way, when you go to do the assignment, you can go back to them and you don't have to ask a whole bunch of questions. Here's an example of using this. Joni drinks at least 16 cups of water every day. How many quarts is that? Well, we know, let's see, we got to find 16 cups is how many quarts. So, we're going to use our railroad tracks again. Okay. So, we have 16 cups, and you could put that over one if you want to. That would be fine. And we know that one pint is equal to two cups. So, we put the cups on the bottom. And we know that one quart is equal to two pints. And again, we, we switched it so the pints were on the bottom. And now we can cross out cups on the top, cups on the bottom, pints on the top, pints on the bottom. We are left with quarts, which is what we're looking for here. 16 times 1 is 16, times 1 is 16 still, and 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4 quarts, and of course 16 divided by 4 is 4 quarts, so the answer is 4 quarts. Didn't that railroad thing work cool? I really like that. It's a, a kind of a fun thing to do. Okay, now I want to talk just a little bit about temperature. In, in our United States, we really go with Fahrenheit. But if you go by the banks and stuff, you'll notice that they have the temperature in Celsius. And Celsius is your metric measurement. Okay, Celsius is your metric measurement. So that's how it's going to look metric-wise. So we're going to look at this and just kind of do some comparison. So if it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit that water boils, it's 100 degrees Celsius. 98.6 is our normal body temperature in Fahrenheit. It's 37 degrees Celsius. 68 degrees is considered a normal room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit at 0 Celsius. And R0 Fahrenheit is negative 17.7 repeating Celsius. So kind of a, wow, kind of if you walked out the door and I said, wow, today it is going to be 37 degrees. Isn't that awful? You're like, not really. Well, if they said Celsius, you'd be going, oh, yeah, that's way too hot. Uh, you want to write these into your notes. The formulas for uh, finding Fahrenheit, to find Fahrenheit, you would take the quantity Celsius, whatever your Celsius temperature is, multiply that by 9 fifths. When you get that, then add 32. For Celsius, you would take whatever your Fahrenheit temperature is, minus 32, and that would be what you'd do first, and then multiply it times 5 ninths. Okay, if you look at that real carefully, you'll see there seems to be a relationship between these two, and there is. Okay, second topic in this lesson is functions. Now, functions are mathematical rules that identify relationships between two sets of numbers. Rules may be described with words or with an equation. The relationship between two sets of numbers is called a function, and it may be illustrated in a table. We often call these input-output tables. Here is an example. Okay. We're using something that we already know that we're comfortable with. Oh my goodness, that was way up high. I'm sorry about that. 
So if you want to go back and look at this, I'll leave this here for just a minute. Uh, the rule of this particular function is pounds times 16 will give you the ounces. So if I have one pound, I multiply that times 16, that will give me 16 ounces. Two pounds, 32 ounces, three pounds, 48, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The generic rule for this particular function is P pounds times 16 will give you the number of ounces. And that's what you're looking for. Ounces here equals 16P. That's your rule. It's a little hard to get used to, but once you understand the input-output, it's, it's a piece of cake. So if Josie weighed um, 9 pounds at birth, the function rule to decide how many pounds that he weighed, sorry, it's Jose, I read it wrong, is ounces equals 16 times P. And if he weighed 9 pounds, then... Ounces would be 16 times 9, which would be 153 ounces. Now, this is really common. If you're working in the medical field in hospitals, everything is changed. Um, now, this amount here would be changed into kilograms. Every baby might be born in pounds, but by the time they write it down in the records, they've changed it all to kilograms. So um, that's an interesting thing. I did not know that at first, but I've done some work in the medical field with some people, and they're like, oh, yeah, everything is all conversion. So if you're interested in the medical field, this is going to be something that eventually you're going to have to learn how to do that conversion. Okay, another easy chart that we can use with function is, is a function chart is yards to feet. Input, yards, output, feet. So it goes in as yards, and it comes out as feet. The rule is one yard, three feet. So one yard, three feet. Two yards, six feet. Three yards, nine feet. Four yards, 12 feet, etc., etc. The generic formula for feet to yards is yards times three will give you feet. So if Joe purchased seven yards of material to build a fence, how many feet is that? Well, the rule is one yard to three feet. So if yards equals seven and feet equal y times three, which is, of course, yards, then feet equals seven times three. So he would have had to have purchased 21 feet of material to build that fence. Well, I hope this was helpful and educational. Sorry for a couple of oops in there, but I think it's good enough to go ahead and publish. So, folks, if you have questions, ask me tomorrow.